Okay. <laughs> Welcome back to now officially talk Bible to me, I guess. Okay, so right now we are in like day four of quarantine, I think, for coronavirus. So, And I'm sure all of you are feeling the same way. It's uh, kind of a struggle. It feels like another strange Christmas break. It's not. But um, that's why Leah and I kind of look like we just rolled out of bed. I, I definitely mean, am still in sweatpants. Yeah. And I did not put on these sweatpants until 4 o'clock in the afternoon. So it's been so, a special day. Jesus doesn't judge your clothes. I mean, I don't... You should show respect, show like, respect, when you go to church. But, like, you but, look kind of nice, but, like, we didn't go out to church today. So, enjoy our messages today. Hi, friends! So, we're back with a little devotion, but today's going to be really short and sweet, just because I'm just trying to get it in there, you know? So, I'm going to be reading Matthew 8, 23 through 27, which is Jesus Calms a Storm. I'm sure you're familiar, and if not, listen up. So pretty much it starts out with Jesus and his disciples on a boat, some of his disciples. And Jesus was just over here napping, you know, just taking a little quick nap. And then this great storm arises and it starts like swamping the boat. The disciples started freaking out and they awoke Jesus saying, save us Lord, we are perishing. And he said to them, why are you afraid, O you of little faith? Then he rose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. And the men marveled, saying, What sort of man is this that even winds and the sea obey him? Okay. First of all, imagine you were on a boat with Jesus, and then you, like, kind of question him. Like, they, these disciples questioned him if he could, like, save them. Like, they thought that they were perishing. They thought that they were dying. They were literally on a boat with Jesus. So, first of all, that's just a little crazy, I think. <laughs> but, anyway... The reason why we're talking about this today is because, you know, the world is really crazy and everything is not going to be perfect. Even if you're a Christian, Jesus isn't just going to be like, okay, hey, let's float through life, you know? We know that if something bad happens, Jesus has the power to just stop it like he did that storm. Like, we know that and the disciples know that. And we know that he could just end it, you know, and just make everything good. But he's not going to do that because bad things are going to happen in this life. We don't need to be praying for Jesus to end all of our storms because we're going to have a lot of storms in our life, whether it's disease or something smaller, you know. We're going to have a lot of our personal storms and Jesus we need to be praying for him to help us through it, not to just end everything, because it's going to be a struggle. But instead of being, hey, can you stop this? Pray for him to help you to get through it, because we're going to have to get through it together, and being in it with Jesus is the best defense you can have. So Jesus will get us through all of our storms, even though he won't end them, because I read another verse in Matthew Oh, let me find that real quick. Let me find that real quick. Oh my gosh, 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 oh my gosh. Oh, okay. It's Matthew 6, 34, and it's, Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow. It's literally on your thing. Oh I have it written on my wall, and I just searched for that for so oh long. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> so Matthew 6, 34 is... Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. He's literally saying, like, don't worry about future things. Sufficient are today's concerns. Honestly, he's kind of telling us that we're going to have future concerns. But don't, because you have Jesus, but we're going to. And so he's not going to not make us have, like, a perfect life. So... Pray for Jesus to get you through all of this stuff instead of praying for a perfect life because that's not going to happen. And so if you want something that will work better, trust that Jesus is with you and pray that he will always be with you. Um, I think that's it. Uh, cause, so let's all pray that he can get us through this storm. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Hi everyone! Welcome back to Bible Story Corner with Morgan. 
or Morgan's Bible Story Corner. Whichever you choose, because I forgot again. Where we left off was Adam and Eve naked in the Garden of Eden. They've just been created. Everything's all good. They're just chilling right now and just, you know, living life. Anyway, today we're going to talk about the fall and where that all went wrong and how we got to where we are today. So, Adam and Eve just chilling in the Garden of Eden. Well, our friend the serpent, aka the devil, decides to show up and he slithers on up to Eve. He's like, what's up girl? The serpent is like real suspicious guy, real crafty and like everyone knows that. He's the worst in the garden pretty much. And so he slithers on up to Eve, which her name's not Eve by the way technically, but that's what I'm gonna call her, okay? Slithers on up and he's like, so like really, like did God say like you, like you really couldn't eat like off of this tree in this garden and he was like well he said that like a lot of them were good but like just this one like we're not supposed to eat off this one he's like okay but like listen here's what i think is that if you eat off that tree like you're gonna have the same knowledge as god and like you're gonna know everything and she was like you sure though because like god said not to and he's like no 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 i promise like this tree sick food's real good and you're gonna know a lot so he was like yeah, alright, I'm down. And she like snatches. They don't know for sure what kind of fruit it is, so it was just a fruit. Snatches it. It was beautiful. It says it's a delight to the eyes. Anyway, she ate the fruit. <laughs> and then she was like, Adam, you should try this. And he like didn't really I mean obviously like he didn't know which tree it came off of. So he's like, Yeah, sure, thanks for the fruit, honey. And so they ate it, and then all of a sudden they were like, Oh my gosh, we're naked. Which Throw back to the last video, like they didn't know they were like naked, like they were just like themselves. Well now they eat this fruit and they're like, oh my, oh no, my privates. Because they like are aware of their like sinfulness and like their eyes were opened. And this is when they get their nice little fig leaf loincloths because they just sewed them together. Not that important, but it's pretty cool. First clothes. <laughs> Now they're, like, aware of their sinfulness and aware of just their, like, being. And they're chilling, and they hear God walking in the garden. And they're like, oh, snap, dragons. Like, we gotta hide from God because, like, he's, like, the big man, right? And this is not good because, like, at first, they, like, they were God's creation. And they were like, God is our dude. Like, yes, we love you. And they always want to be with him. Now they're hiding from their creator. So they're hiding, and God's, like... Uh, guys, I literally know you're hiding. Why are you hiding from me? He's like, mmm, did you eat from the tree I told you not to eat from? And Adam comes out and he's like, mmm, my bad. Like, I, I hid because I was scared of you and I was naked. And he's like, God's like, man, who told you you were naked? Like, are you kidding me? And that's when he knew that they had eaten from the tree. And of course, Adam's like, she did it. She told me to eat from the tree and blah, blah, blah. And God was like mad at Eve. He's like, what, what have you done? And she's like, the serpent, real bad dude. The serpent like told me to and I was deceived and I ate it. So God is mad at the serpent. At first, he tells, there's this whole chunk about how cursed the serpent's going to be. And that's when he like lowers the serpent to the ground and says that he'll eat dirt all his days and he'll be on his belly all the days of his life. And I mean, that's, that's what snakes do now. But this is the most important part is that God tells the serpent, he shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. This is one of my favorite parts of this story is because it's a very cool image of, um, Jesus, right? Like Jesus is going to bruise the devil like he he's gonna take a one-two punch on the devil when he comes back and dies for our sins but at the same time he's being crucified on a cross like that's the serpent coming back and biting his heel as he's crushing him so this is a really cool symbol pointing towards the messiah and comes back you know in the new testament well once god's done punishing the serpent he like looks at eve he's like because you did this gonna multiply your pain and childbearing so like ladies giving birth is not easy this is like pretty much why and then he tells Adam since you listened to your wife and you know made a mistake uh, you're basically cursed and pain and stuff 
And this is also where we get the verse, for you are dust, and to dust you shall return. After God tells Adam that, you know, you're going to die, you're going to return to the ground, for you are dust, and to dust you shall return. That's Genesis 3.19. Also, God made clothes for them. He was like, here's some actual garments. Yeah, basically, that's the fall. That's why, that's the, you know, original sin. And that's why Jesus had to come and die for us. This is just a really important story about the beginning of sin and why it's a thing and how deceiving the devil can be to this day. Like, he still is that sly little snake that can come up and talk you into, like, really dumb stuff. And that's, that's why we all still sin is because the devil is so tricky and, like, talks us into, like, really terrible stuff, even if it's just eating the wrong things. So be careful of that snake and... Mwah. So thanks for tuning in to this one. We hope you enjoyed again. And though a lot of churches are shut down, most of them probably, we hope that you can still find a way to help your church out by sending an offering or volunteering or anything like that you can do to help everyone out in this time. Also, again, if you have any prayer requests, leave them in the comments so that we can help out in any way possible. And, um, I never wanted to do this. I never, I, never, I never wanted to say that. I don't know. I never wanted to say it. I never wanted to. I never wanted to. But listen. But, but listen. Like it's so listen, uh, listen. It, let, let's just say. Let's just say you're watching this video and you're like, I really enjoyed that. I appreciate it. There's a button that you can show that. You give it a little, you. little click and you just say, smash it. And, and <laughs> All right, we're actually gonna be ending this channel. No. <laughs> and then, man, Morgan and Leah love them, so I want to show them my support. So that's when you're gonna. That's when you're gonna say, subscribe, and we then we'll know that I'm that regretting someone, everything. <laughs> then we'll know that someone is watching them. Oh, also, if I you guess. don't like it, there's also a don't like button. So you I could would do rather that. not. I mean, oh, I'm trying to make disciples of all nations right here. We're getting over. Listen, okay, we're crossing listen. the line. <laughs> Listen, we really appreciate all the support on Facebook from all of our mom's friends. Thank you. <laughs> okay, thank you for watching. We'll see you soon, probably. Also, if you have any, like, uh, readings that you want us to read, mm. let us know um, so that we can read the Bible together. <laughs> see you soon. Bye. Cut. 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 Okay. This is pretty terrible. <laughs> hey, what's up, you guys? <laughs> That was chaos. Okay, bye. Oh, no. Oh.